Hello guys and welcome to Program Artist. In this episode I will talk about unit tests, integration tests and the difference between them. Our job as programmers is to build stuff and we want to build them good so they would work and would break as less as possible. So it is basically, you can look at it as building buildings, okay? Building structures. So if we take a structure, okay, uh, we can look at the structure as a separate thing from a street, okay? So uh, in order to build a single structure, uh, we need to start from the basics, okay? So what is the basic stuff that makes a structure? So the basic stuff is a building block, okay? It is the smallest thing that makes a structure. And we want to make sure that these building blocks are very sturdy and won't break under the load of the entire structure. Uh, of course, they will, uh, they will handle the load of the structure and will separate the load between all of the uh, building blocks, but every building block will get some load uh, of the structure. So, as with the buildings, we need to make sure that our programming building blocks are tough and will withstand the, uh, the, the strain of entire uh, code running and won't break, because if our single uh, structure block of code will break, probably it will cause the entire structure, the entire program to, to behave in some bad way. So to test the toughness of this building block, uh, what we do is we take this building block and we try to bend it, try to roll it, try to throw it, uh, try to uh, break it and roll it and do all kind of stuff to the single building block without the block knowing about the other blocks it will be aligned with. Meaning, we isolate this block from the entire system, from the entire building, and we test it as a single uh, building block by itself. So with code, the same as with the building blocks, we want to test that our building block of the code, which can be either a class or a function, depending whether you're coding in object-oriented or functioning program programming languages, so we want to make sure that our building blocks are as tough as we can and we want to isolate them and test them in isolation to other building blocks, meaning we want to test our, for example, class or function in isolation to other functions and classes in our code system. You may wonder uh, how can we do it, how is uh, code isolation works. So it works the same way as building blocks isolation works. So for example, if you look at this Lego block, you can see that it has uh, slots for other blocks to enter. And we, may, we want to make sure that these slots are tough enough and will hold the other blocks together. So we are not taking another block and connecting to it, okay, and checking whether they will disconnect. We are creating a another block which this block connects to it and this block is uh, is built with sensors and when we connect it and try to disconnect these sensor blocks are measuring how tough it is this block so the same way with the code what we can do we can mock okay this is the terminology uh, we mock other objects other functions that this block that our function receives. For example, if our function receives a logger and wants to log something, we give it not a, a real log, we're giving it a mocked log, so a log object. So when we're giving the function the mock of the logger, we're actually trying to test whether this function is using this mock correctly, meaning whether it calls the log functions correctly with the correct parameters, correct number of times. As with structure blocks, our code blocks or functions, for example, we're testing them to see how they will behave in different scenarios. For example, we're testing what will happen if we'll pass this function a null, and we're testing what will happen if we're passing this function some arguments and different arguments. 
how it will behave, will it behave properly or will it throw an exception, will it use the mock we gave the function or uh, some other behavior. Because you can use mocks and uh, mock behavior of other objects which our function receives, uh, it is very easy to test very specific behaviors and edge cases which makes all of this makes the unit tests uh, to be easy to write. So if it is so easy to write and uh, you're usually using mocks and not real objects, for example, you're not accessing real database, real file system, you're using mocks, this means that our unit tests will run very fast. And because the unit tests are run fast and you can write a lot of them, it means that there will be a lot of unit tests and even though there will be a lot of them, they will still run fast. You will be able to run all your, the unit tests of the function, of the code block, uh, very quickly. And the idea behind unit tests is that there will be a lot of them and they will check each and every unit block of code uh, and will make sure that every unit behaves as it's supposed to behave. Well, after we've made sure our unit of codes, our functions, are running properly, we've tested them with unit tests. What we didn't test for uh, by now is the connection between them, meaning that each and every code block is con connects with other code block uh, properly and uses the connections properly. For example, we can test that the Lego code block, okay, that the Lego block is tough enough and will connect properly to other lego code blocks and we can test that uh, some other other wooden block uh, will is tough enough and uh, will with, withstand pressure high pressures and will uh, will withstand uh, i don't know for uh, tough winds and other stuff but now we want to make sure that our blocks are connecting properly for example lego block and the wooden block that we tested earlier won't connect properly. So even though each and every unit test of that block is passing, the, the test that will involve both of them will fail because, well, their API, their connection systems are different and weren't written in the way that you can connect them. So this is where integration tests are coming uh, useful. You're taking each code block and you're now combining them together and you're checking that their combination works together. So if you have, for example, multiple blocks okay, of code that you checked before, now you have uh, another, for example, this is a big code block and now you want to check that those three small code blocks and this large code block are connecting properly. Okay, so that you can connect them and after you connect them they behave okay they form the shape they form the behavior that you want them to form so this is what integration tests are for you're still not getting the entire structure you're getting a, for example in this case you're getting some wall of the structure but it is you're getting something uh, beneficial because you're testing that the connections of the uh, near blocks are working together properly, that you can connect them and after you connect them, they're, they're behaving properly. So let's give an example uh, of code that will work properly in unit tests and will break after we're using integration tests. For example, we have a code block, a function that accepts two numbers and returns the first number divided by the second number. Okay, this is what our code block does. And we tested it properly and we, we've seen that it works uh, as expected. Now, our second code block will accept an array of numbers and will return the sum of the numbers. Okay, so it, again, we tested it, we unit tested it, and it works properly given any array, null arrays, empty arrays, arrays with a lot of numbers, array of uh, integers of doubles, mixed arrays, okay, integers and doubles, we tested all of them and they work properly. And we have a third block that uh, accepts an array of numbers and returns the average and it uses the other blocks, the block 1 and 2, okay, so it sums all of the numbers and it divides it by the length of the array, so it uses the 
second block to sum all of the numbers and the first block to divide the sum by the length of our array. But because we unit tested it, we gave the block number three mocks of block number one and two, the mocks of adding and the mocks of dividing, meaning that we assume that the other blocks are working properly. So uh, when we mocked, we mocked that when we accept an array of something, we return the sum of it. And we mocked when we received two numbers, we returned uh, the first number divided by the second number. Okay, so all of the unit tests of block number three will work now as well. But think about it, what will happen if for some reason you want to change the behavior of block number one, the dividing block, and you want to switch the order of the parameters, meaning that now when you accept uh, two numbers, you're dividing the second by the first number. So what will happen now? You, your unit test of code block number one, the dividing, will break, so you will update them, and all other unit tests will pass without breaking even the unit tests of the third block because the behavior of division is mocked there, so it won't change. But what will happen now in the real system? In the real system, the block number three, the average block, will accept the real dividing block and will pass the parameters in the wrong order. Okay, so the, exam the result you will receive is not the result that you expected. So instead of receiving an average of numbers, you will receive some other number. And when you use this average in your uh, other code, it will probably uh, create some, some kind of bug. So how can you write a test that will fail if you're switching the order of the parameters on the first block, on the dividing block? Well, the simplest way you can think is probably the right one, you need to pass to the average block the block that calculates the division, the real one. You're now using a test that uses the real dividing, the real summing and the real average block mixed together. So now when you're switching the order in the dividing block, this test will break also because the average block will pass it the parameters in the wrong order and the result will be different from what you expected. This way this test will break. But when you're doing this, you're actually what you're doing is you're writing integration tests. This is what integration test is all about. You're using two real okay, you're using two real blocks, this block and this block, and you're writing a test that uses them together, connects them, and checks the behavior of the result when you're using both of the real units of code. So this is actually what integration test is all about. Now you need to know that integration tests are harder to write because, uh, well, you need to instantiate all of the real code blocks and each instantiation can be hard because each instantiation, the real instantiation needs to uh, receive other stuff. Each code block needs other stuff to be initialized and uh, the code block that uses other code blocks is also harder to initialize, so the initialization process is harder. And the number of possibilities to test them, meaning to, to pass the different kind of arguments, is growing ex exponentially. So if, for, for example, for the code block number one there are five possibilities, and for code block number two there are four possibilities, so in combination, uh, it is 5 by 4, 20 possibilities to test all the cases. And if you're adding another block, it grows exponentially. So uh, what it means is that probably you won't cover all the edge cases of the entire combination of the blocks. But it is okay, because what you're trying to test is not that every single edge case is working, because you're... you're uh, You've already tested the units of the code, the single blocks, and you know that they work properly. So what you need to do is test a few good cases, a few bad cases, and you uh, can be pretty sure that the entire block of code will work properly. Uh, all you want to know is that the connections between those blocks work properly in a few good cases and a few bad cases. Because you're using real objects, to write the tests, 
the tests run slowly. Okay, they run much slower than unit tests. So because uh, the integration tests run slowly, each integration test runs slowly, uh, but because the number of integration tests uh, is lower, usually they run around the same amount of time of the uh, entire unit tests, uh, but they can run uh, much slower because of uh, depends on how fast each and every uh, integration test runs. So to summarize, unit tests test single units of code. They are isolated, they are fast to run, and they are simple to write. Where integration tests, they, they run on multiple units of codes, they are harder to write, they run slowlier, and they are less isolated from the entire system. You have watched an episode about unit integration tests. Let me know what you think about it by leaving a comment in the comment section down below. You can watch more videos about tests by clicking over here, or you can trust YouTube to know what you really want to see and click over here. If you want to watch more code related videos, check out my channel and feel free to subscribe. See you later on Program Artist. Thank you.